Hey guys, Emma at the Vlog Lady here and I'm in the woods today, obviously. <laughs> today I'm going to talk about Twin Peaks one year on, what feelings I'm left with, what thoughts I'm having. Um, I'm, I'm making this video because a lot of people are doing rewatches of Twin Peaks at the minute um, because of the fact that it's one year since it aired and also I've noticed that a lot of people are just starting to watch Twin Peaks as well. Um, it's picking up new fans all the time. So really I just want to do talk about my thoughts and feelings about the show one year on. So this is like mini snow foamy falls. Very mini. <laughs> So I haven't watched the show since last year. Um, I did watch like f quite a few episodes just after it ended, but then I haven't watched any since because I basically wanted to take um, quite a big break from it. I feel enough time has gone by to let me sit with it, to let me feel it. So I think there are a lot of themes in Twin Peaks which um, have left their mark on me. Just off the top of my head, for instance, like I think there are themes of like death and aging and parents and children and economic differences and love and the unknown, dependency, how communities function. Bro, don't go down there. Come, 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 come. Sorry. <laughs> I think one of the main things for me um, that I'm left with is the fact that depressingly <laughs> we age and we die and we don't even have to age actually we just die um, and that I think was addressed in the show not just because we had actors who were very close to their deaths but because we saw instances of death in very young characters as well and that you know notion of what happens to us when we die or what does life even mean what does death mean you know you know what death means I think as well in, in seeing Cooper, the fact that he was in the lodge and he spent his life in, in the lodge, trapped in the lodge, which was it's quite a horrible thing to think about. And the fact that he had lost a huge chunk of his life, I think, um, almost is like a wake up call, I think, to anyone who feels maybe like they're stuck or maybe like they're not living enough. The horror of it and the sadness of it and the fact that he recognised his loss at various points of the show. The fact that we see characters like the Log Lady um, delivering vitally important messages. Um, it seems to be an affirmation of life, a sort of urgency to grab hold of life almost, to be what you can even when you're aged, um, to do what you can. As, you know, it's, it wasn't just reflected in Cooper as well, it was, it was like the whole cast, the returning cast, were all 25 years older. We, and if you're an original fan, you're obviously 25 years older as well. And that realization is kind of shocking, difficult to deal with sometimes, the fact that you know that you're closer to your death, a natural death, if you get, if you are lucky enough to die naturally of old age. So for me that was a pretty important part of Twin Peaks, the fact that um, aging and death was addressed. I found it really interesting that some of the characters that we revisited didn't have happy stories and I don't think that's just because of the high incident incidents of evil in Twin Peaks. I think it's because that's reality, that is life. You know, people do have terrible things happen to them. People do have marriage breakups. People do lose children. People do have terrible accidents that maim them or harm them in some way, irrevocably. I think there was a great representation of the reality of life in this season with characters like um, Big Ed, Spending a very quiet life, <laughs> yearning for something he didn't have. Um, I think a lot of us live like that. Um, also with James and with Shelley and Bobby, their situations were very rooted in reality, I think. <laughs> Questions of the unknown um, and the mysteries of life, I think, were 
very much addressed in this season and I think it's a beautiful thing to be left on that note that we were left with. Um, immediately after that last episode I did feel very depressed and shocked, um, sad. It was almost as if someone had like literally banged me over the head with something. You know, I sometimes get this feeling myself personally that I'm at a service station in the middle of the night and lots of people are coming in and out and nobody is staying and I just generally feel lost. And I think that sometimes when you're <clears throat> questioning what life means, what this world means, what the universe means, I think you get those moments when everything feels very overwhelming and you know that you, you can't find the answers, you can only guess at the answers, you can only accept what you feel inside your soul and that may not be the truth. And I think that that ending really reflected the idea of man's quest to figure out what he is, what he is doing, why he is here, and in that sense I think that it was a very astute ending, it was a very intelligent and moving and rewarding ending, even though it didn't have a particularly feel-good sense to it. Ultimately I think the feel-good aspect of it comes from the realization that we are a thinking creature, that we can create this conjecture about who we are and what's going on. You know, we can ask these questions and no matter what, no matter where we are, no matter what we are doing or whether we are winning or losing or succeeding or failing, we can ask questions, we can think, we can experience, we can love, we can hate, we can fight, we can rest, we can, you know, we are alive basically. <laughs> That's what I get from it. I think the whole absurdity of this quest, I guess, if you like, is Dougie. Um, and Dougie is <laughs> is probably my my most problematic part of the entire series, the, the entire series of Twin Peaks, from season one to the movie to season three, um, because I just find it so hard to watch the Dougie character, who is not actually Dougie, who is actually Agent Cooper trapped inside the form of, well not even trapped inside, it's just he is masquerading as Dougie, um, but we've come to know him as Dougie. <laughs> so thinking that he is Agent Cooper with some kind of disability, very difficult for me to watch. The comedy aspect of it um, didn't quite work for me, but I think that it's almost Beckett-esque in how it's being explained to audiences, um, that this character is in this world that he's in, this ridiculous, ridiculous world of Las Vegas um, with all these ridiculous characters. You know, sometimes you can watch shows and they don't stay with you, but this Twin Peaks season three has definitely stayed with me and something that I think about and return to and Dipper <laughs> has questions about and try and solve the mystery of certain things in the show. Um, I don't think it's super important that things are resolved. Um, I think the fact that there aren't any answers to certain things makes it what it is. And another thing that I'm left with is the idea that the stories are still going on, you know, with say Ben for instance. I, I keep thinking what is Ben doing? <laughs> what is Ben doing? What is Lucy doing? What is Andy doing? What is Bobby doing? How, you know, and <laughs> there are a million possibilities and I quite like that my imagination can go in any direction it chooses. The fact is life is so complex, so complicated and I think this was portrayed so well in this series without even explaining what had happened to people. You know, like in, in regards to James, for instance, like we don't really know what happened to him, but, but that small snippet of information about him having an accident, um, you know, that, that 
informs us in our imaginations about so much that could have happened to him over the years that that might have might have been his life um, so in that sense it's so freaking clever <laughs> the fact that the way that the story was addressed and the plot and the themes um, means that it played out more like an educational piece of art rather than a piece of fluff um, television entertainment and in that sense it was really something quite unique and something brave not for just for the writers and the producers and the directors but for the network as well and for everyone to take a chance on that kind of piece because I don't think it's something that we see all that often um, on television and I think that this show season three will stand the test of time and will be referred to for a long long time <laughs> so yeah I'm looking forward to viewing it again and seeing what I can take from it and then after I watch the whole thing I probably won't return to it for quite a while again um, but it's definitely something that I think has given me meaning given given an extra dimension to my life I want to say which sounds ridiculous but I really think that any kind of art that makes you question things any kind of art that makes you wonder makes you feel makes you dream um, shows you something that you could never have imagined yourself um, I just think it's amazing and I'm very thankful that they brought Twin Peaks back and so thankful to have been part of the community watching the show every week to everyone who like engaged with me during the time it was on it was really a great experience for me and I really hope that David Lynch actually keeps making more art because his vision in particular really gets to me in a way that nobody else's does um, and I think that's probably true for many of you watching so I'm gonna end it there because I think I have talked myself out in these words and I hope nobody is like around because they're gonna think I'm a complete nut. Okay, so thank you for watching today. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at the vlog lady and you can leave a comment. Please tell me what you think and feel about Twin Peaks one year on um, because if you're watching this I'm guessing that it's still with you. <laughs> That's it for now. Bye. Come on then. Let's go.